subscribe to our youtube channel for in-depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates Hello and welcome to Nirmal Bang, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hiral Dadia. We have with us Mr. Ashish Chaujaria, National Head Restructuring Services at Grand Thornton Bharat, uh, the Resolution Professional for Jet Airways, joining in as well. Welcome to the show, Ashish, and it's a pleasure to speak to you as well. My first thing that I would want to tell you is that really congratulations for achieving this kind of a milestone. I mean, it's been 18 months, and I think a lot of people had actually lost hopes with regards to Jet Airways. However, you know, the idea was that it is going to be tough and uncertain. What would you have to say about it? Well, Hidal, thank you very much for the compliments, and it certainly is very pleasing, you know, to be here where we are today after this uh, 15, 16 months of toil. And, you know, it's been... Uh, a difficult period, to say the least. You know, we have faced a lot of challenges, but I think you know we kept our you know uh, uh, feet on the ground and we you know kept uh, working on it, rolled up our sleeves, and you know uh, with the support of the lenders and the you know various uh, advisors and my team, we managed to get here today. So it's quite quite uh, you know uh, pleasing to be here and definitely very motivating because I think you know I was telling someone uh, earlier that. The amount of work and whatever we did would have been probably the same had this resolution plan not been passed. No one, no one would have ever noticed, right? I mean, it's because the plan is approved today that uh, you know uh, there is so much of buzz and you know positivity around this. So yeah, I mean, I'm glad that you know we are part of this. Right. So, Ashish, how has the resolution for a jet airways been different from the others uh, that have worked and resolved so far, according to you? So, here you need to, uh, you know, look at it, look at the, look at the company, and you know, when, uh, what, what is this company about? A, I think it is probably the largest uh, company which in the service sector which has gone into insolvency. At least that's my assessment. I don't think any other. Uh, you know, uh, well, of course, you have DHFL, which is a financial services company, which came in came in later, but uh, it is the largest uh, company in the services sector, which you know went into insolvency without, uh, and you know there wasn't enough uh, experience of handling anything in the aviation sector with anyone in India. Uh, so, coming into this sector, which you know has its own unique challenges. Plus the situation mm. of the company when we started, uh, you know, back in June 2019, when I first came into the Jet Airways office after the court's order was received, you know, the court mentioned in their order that should be a fast track process and the RPs requested to expedite the whole insolvency. So I emerged and I appeared in this uh, office and there was literally, uh, you know, a couple of guards and one person in the office to welcome me. There was no one in the organization because mm -hmm. we had stopped operating two, two months before that and you know no salaries were paid. All the directors of the company had resigned. All the KMPs of the company had resigned prior to us starting. Uh, so coming into, and also not to miss, we were blocked out from the IT systems of the company because the IT mm. vendor was not paid and he had long overdues. So coming into a situation like that when, you know, it was completely blind, you know, he had no one senior in the organization to help uh, to give us the background, no access to information and data. Uh, those initial challenges and, and the assets of the company spread out all over the country. You know, uh, of course, we now know all the aircrafts are yeah. you know, in three or four airports. Uh, you know, we have maintained them, but they were operating in you know over uh, 25, 30 stations across India. So pretty wide uh, spread uh, business. So I think the challenges that existed at that time, you know, one after the other, we started addressing them, starting with access to IT. Uh, system because as you know, you know, IT systems is like the, you know, uh, 
veins of a company, right? All the blood flows through that. All the so we needed to get into the system to really understand what's going on, and uh, we formed a small asset preservation team comprising of select people from what was remaining in the company at that time, and uh, from there we started building our strategy for resolution. And uh, you know, while one aspect was to protect and preserve the assets of the company, uh, the company had already stopped uh, flying. So the airline had stopped flying mm -hmm. in April. So that was not something which uh, you know one could really start very quickly given right. the financial situation in the company. But the idea was to even protect uh, what you had, and mm -hmm. then find a resolution. So. We built out our strategy gradually, and there were we were receiving you know claims from literally all over the world. Yeah. We have creditors, uh, you know, ticket passengers, almost six hundred thousand or more passengers who were affected by the sudden stoppage of the airline. We had over twelve thousand employees who mm. were not been paid. By uh, Airways at the time when it went down, uh, so the scale and size of this case, you know, we we are still receiving claims from you know passengers. So uh, the scale of this to manage and ramp up, that was a significantly different. Apart from of course the challenges in the sector itself. Mm. Right. I think Ashish, by now you yourself would have become an aviation expert already to probably run an airline, taking this experience into consideration. So, you know, on a lighter note, learning. from your own, absolutely. And, and, you know, taking this business plan that has been submitted by the Jalan Carl Rock Consortium, uh, it has received lenders' approval. Now, two steps that I look at it, you know, as you've mentioned earlier as well, is one, that the plan, the resolution plan, is something that needs to be submitted to the court. And secondly, uh, the routes need to come back to Jet Airways. What's the kind of timeline that we're looking for both of these? You rightly said there are, uh, you know, before Jet can fly again, you can see the you know, rising sun in the skies again. Mm. Uh, you'll have two important steps. One is to get the NCLT approval. You know, a very important step in the resolution process because they have to, you know, stamp their approval of the plan that it's complied with all the, uh, you know, requirements, the mandatory, you know, requirements of the IPC itself. Also, one of the requirements uh, which the applicants have is to get back the airport slots and the traffic rights okay. which were enjoyed by JET prior to its suspension. Now, these are very important, uh, you know, you, you know, you should, I'm sure you understand that for an airline, yeah. what are the key components? I mean, uh, you have these aircrafts, not so difficult to procure. Now I understand, you know, there are enough uh, leasing companies which you can you know, get aircraft yeah. from. Now, especially there's ample supply. You need people, uh, you need trained, you know, pilots, engineers, cabin crew, ground handling and then you need these airports to fly in and out of right that's very critical yeah. the in india like many other countries it's the government or the ministry which controls these slots and they are allocated to the airline operators schedule operators based on certain rules and regulations so jet airways over the years had you know built up a reasonably good portfolio of slots which they had. Mm -hmm. uh, they were, uh, you know, they were about I think, 600 departures uh, per day uh, mm -hmm. across in, in Indian domestic and international routes. So a fairly sizable operation, uh, you know, before it went down. So these slots were allocated to JET. They were available to JET for its use. But since JET was abruptly suspended operations, Rightfully, the you know government had to sort of reallocate some of these slots to other takers. Mm -hmm. who did, you know, the slots are those landing and taking off times. You know, in the morning, in the evening, during the day. So they have allocated that uh, to other airlines. But they have said, you know, in in various occasions, that this was a temporary uh, sort of 
yeah. allocation. So once these slots are given back uh, to JTAVs, and that too, it, it is not expected that all those slots you need back from day one, right? Because you can't expect anyone to start flying 120 aircrafts from you know day one mm -hmm. or month one. So uh, they will ramp up in their operations. As they ramp up, they have laid out a very clear business plan. So yeah. the expectation is that you know that these slots would be provided, the traffic route permits will be provided. Based on that, you know, the new owners would actually kick off the sort of operate the flying operations and you know implement the plan at that stage. Right. So Ashish, what are the odds that the court could reject the same as well? Because currently it's actually after three failed attempts that lenders have actually, you know, probably approved a final proposal, which if not approved by the court, that's something which could derail the entire plan. What are the odds over there? I would not like to speculate on what the courts might do. That's a prerogative of the adjudicating authority. But the only thing I would like to comment on is, you know, as has been held in various occasions recently and also in the SRCV case, that the commercial wisdom of the COC is held supreme. So as far as the plan or the commercials of the plan are concerned, the COC has been entrusted with that responsibility to okay. know, verify, assess the feasibility, viability of the plan, and then, you know, agree or disagree to any particular you know plan based on the requisite majority yeah, yeah, the yeah. role of the role of the nclt is very important because uh, you know i am as a resolution professional a court appointed officer and Correct. i report to the nclt with respect to all the steps that have been carried out you know yeah. the, there are certain mandatory uh, compliances that need to be, that need to be ensured that are you know, are available in the plan, you know, like protecting the interest of employees and workmen as yeah. prescribed, or any dissenting financial creditors. So there are various you know requisites. I believe that you know these requisites have been taken care of, and uh, mm -hmm. they have you know I I you know uh, I would certify that obviously when the plan is being submitted for approval. Right. Thereafter, there may be, of course, there may be challengers, there may be dissenters, there may be you know, uh, people who would, may oppose the plan because they, you know, every creditor, obviously, you know, creditors out here are plenty, as you may have seen from the creditors list, and all of them are not getting paid their entire dues. So they're obviously unhappy creditors as well. But uh, we do not know how long and how much challenges there might be. Uh, hopefully, not too much, because you know it, it remains quite uh, difficult and expensive to continue maintaining these aircrafts on the ground, etc. Right. So, the sooner we can find a resolution, the new owners take over. It's better for the company and for everyone. Right. I do hope that it should not take too long. Right. So, with this, you know what happens is that. So we have received approval from the lenders. What happens with the operational creditors? Um, are we trying to say that they do have the rights to come and challenge uh, at NCLT level now, however small the operational creditor is? So look, it's it's a free country. Everyone has a right to challenge. I mean, if they if they feel that they have been treated unfairly, oh. however, the IBC, the Insolvency Code. Uh, lays down, you know, certain protections, certain minimum criteria on how operating creditors, how financial creditors, how employees and workmen, how they need to be dealt with. So, if anyone who challenges, who feels that he's not been treated as per the IBC, then certainly, you know, he has a he or you know they have a you know case to make. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, you know, it may be a bit difficult to sustain, right? Because if yeah. if it is, uh, you know, whatever is offered or, you know, whatever is the way it's been addressed in the resolution plan, if it complies with the insolvency code, then, uh, you know, how, 
how would you challenge that? So I think, uh, you know, it all depends on, you know, how they perceive and how mm. they see the contents of the plan for them, themselves. Right. So if lenders have taken a 90% haircut, Ashish, do you think the operational creditors also will be given the same treatment where they will have to take a 90% haircut and the remainder probably will be in milestones or in installments where the pending payments could be cleared or even they would be offered some percentage in terms of where equity goes? So I, I don't know where you are, uh, you know, getting your numbers from this 90% haircut, et cetera. I would not like to comment on that uh, because, uh, you know, these are confidential and, you know, the process is sure, sure. Uh, You know, uh, how the treatment of the creditors, the financial creditors, operational creditors are, is spelled out in the plan very clearly. It has been assessed by the uh, financial creditors and the COC members. Mm -hmm. And they have approved the plan, which uh, you know they believe is commercially the most prudent plan in, in the given circumstances. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the treatment of the creditors, as I said earlier, is on the basis of how the IBC permits. Mm. So right. I, I, and then sorry, with I this, cannot get into more specifics about the plan. I sure, sure. Uh, no, I understand. I understand at what stage you are. So I completely agree with that. And, and another fact that I was, you know, reading about was uh, there are a lot of operational creditors, Ashish, who belong to the MSME category. Now, <clears throat> when you talk about MSME rules that have been laid down by the government, what they say is that the MSME somewhere needs to be paid their dues within 45 days. And there is an interest fee that is charged along with it as well. What happens to creditors who belong to this MSME category? Have they been looked at separately? Under the IBC, there is no uh, so no such requirement or no such category hmm. of okay. uh, MSME creditors or any special treatment prescribed in the IBC. So hmm. uh, since there's no such uh, basis as per IBC, there's no such, uh, you know, special treatment accorded there. Right. And how long, according to you, will the first flight really take to take off if everything goes well? I certainly hope it's not too long because, you know, all the family, friends, people I know of, you know, are asking the same question that, you know, when can we fly again? Mm. again? So, uh, well, but practically speaking, uh, you know, we have, like I said, the NCLT uh, approvals to be had, we have to make that application to NCLT. Uh, there are certain formalities that need to happen before I can file with NCLT. We are in process of doing that. As soon as after we file with the NCLT, there are other pending, uh, uh, you know, matters which are already being adjudicated by NCLT. Those also would need to get resolved. So. You know, also, sorry, I forgot to mention here, yeah, these aircrafts would need to be procured, right? Many of the mm, aircrafts are not available yet. They need to be procured. And it's not like you're going to go out to the shop and buy it. You need to, you know, there's a certain lead time for these things. So you know, I'll be happy if we can, we can see the, you know, jet back in the skies in, you know, four to six months time, you know, that, that would be, a good outcome, I feel. Right. And with the employees, will they start recruiting employees from now? Or will it be once everything is approved by the NCLT, etc.? And will the former employees also be paid their dues? Or is there any equity stake being offered to them? So that, that's a combination. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'll address your former employees. I think the former employees who and the employees, even current employees whose dues were not paid until insolvency commencement, they had filed their claims and their claims have been admitted by us, you know, uh, depending on, you know, whatever the outstandings were, etc. So they would be dealt with as per the IBC. Going forward, for, as far as employees are concerned, I think there's some interesting uh, solutions being provided by uh, uh, by the new owners. You know, they they are proposing to create some employee-owned 
organization which would be engaged to you know offering services into jet uh, as a, as a preferred vendor uh, there are certain other uh, i would say uh, 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 benefits also being offered to to them if they are agreeable to that so i sorry i cannot get into too many specifics oh, but yeah. it's it's a it's a matter which has been uh, definitely a important consideration because as i said it's a people business so you need to you know uh, have the good quality people and you know satisfied employees going forward so i'm sure the new owners have a strategy how they want to do that because that's something which obviously the granularity of that is not something that i'm going to uh, get involved in uh, right as far as the timing is concerned well i think they have already started framing their uh, you know management teams how then what they want to do mm. but i think the formal recruitments would probably more uh, likely to happen uh, you know later on right when there is more certainty on this mm. you know you cannot i mean they don't they have no management control or any kind of control on the company please remember that yeah. the process is still under insolvency correct i'm still the resolution professional so mm. uh and right now i am not going to hire anyone so uh, right. i think that's more a process of identification and shortlisting mm -hmm. probably what they would be preparing but again right. that's something you know their strategy so yeah have. yeah and ashish uh, would you be able to spell out anything with regards to how much equity kalrock jalana planning to infuse in the airline uh sorry i cannot uh, divulge any numbers out there again but i can only tell you that uh, you know they are uh, you know proposing to infuse a fair amount of money which would be required for you know the the revival of the business and the you know the lenders and the advisors have assessed this feasibility and viability of this uh, plan whatever they propose they propose a detailed business plan which has been reviewed mm. by the lenders and their advisors as well and i guess if they have sort thought this is uh, you know reasonable and feasible i guess it must be so uh, you know i think we should leave it at that right and very lastly ashish with jet privilege which is now intermiles what's the deal on that front because jet currently still holds 49.9% so does anything change and come back to normal see that's a subject matter of a different agreement as you said right mm. jet airways has a 49.9% uh, share share mm. holding in that company uh, the majority is held by the shareholders the erstwhile uh, shareholders uh, well they are still the shareholders of jet airways etihad correct uh, i think you know the loyalty program was a very important uh, part of the business for jet airways you know uh, i think most of yeah. business travelers that we know they are members of the loyalty program and they have uh, you know the the customer loyalty is very important for any such business right so i think they are engaging see the shareholding continues needless to say right that percent is there and uh, so you have partial control there is a shareholders agreement there is a management control on those uh, on the operations of that company hopefully if jet uh, airways flies uh, again soon we'll find that uh, you know jet privilege or now intermiles as it's called we'll also you know start seeing that recovery and that buoyancy that was yeah. there because obviously without uh, you know the airline partner it is difficult uh, for you know that that loyalty program also to prosper especially given what's happening now in this current okay. situation absolutely and i think the timing probably is right as well i think by the time jet learns how to fly yet again that will be time when we will see a recovery as well from the pandemic so hoping that jet revives faster than the economy that's the hope that everyone has right now as well thank you ashish so much for joining in it was a pleasure to speak to you and great work that we've seen on one of the uh, most important resolutions that everyone has been awaiting so far right now but thank you so much for joining in stay safe and we hope to chat with you soon again thank you so much thank you very much Thank you.